Welcome to the final part of our five-part series where we are celebrating the anniversary of Charles Lindbergh's historic feat by modeling his Spirit of St. Louis monoplane. We'll pick up where we left off in part four with a nearly completed half of the aircraft and we'll begin adding some of the aircraft's details using some essential modeling techniques. Before we mirror these bodies, let's add the right main tire using the revolve tool. I'll unhide the front view image and while modeling the landing gear struts, I created a reference plane parallel to the front plane that runs through the center of the tire. Now let's sketch on this plane and simply sketch half of the simulated tire over the front view image. The line that goes through the center of the wheel will be my axis of revolution. Exit the sketch and in the command manager navigate to revolved boss slash base. Select our sketched center line and click this green check mark to complete the revolve. Now we are ready to mirror this half of the aircraft. You'll find the mirror command in the command manager. Once in the property manager, first select the mirror face or plane. In this case, this flat face on the side of the aircraft. And this is also on the same plane as the right plane. And then you can select either features, faces, or bodies to mirror. In this case, we are mirroring multiple bodies, so I will navigate to that option and select the bodies I'd like to mirror. Now we have our full aircraft. And I'll use the combine tool with the add operation type selected to combine the fuselage halves and the rudder halves. Let's start adding some of the final details, starting with the door that is located on the right side of the aircraft. Sketching on the right plane, I'm just using the line tool to draw the door shape, and I'll dimension this door in relation to the existing window. I want to just cut this door out so I can 3D print it separately, so I'm going to use the Offset Entities tool to offset the door's outline, 0 0.015 inches. Exit the sketch and navigate to the Extruded Cut command in the Command Manager, and I'll simply do a blind cut to a dimension that cuts through the side of the fuselage but not into the strut. Now let's use the same operation to cut out the windows located on the top of the aircraft.
With these windows, I'll just sketch a single dimensioned rectangle and then use the linear sketch pattern tool to pattern the rectangle in the Y axis. and I'll do a simple mirror of these three rectangles to complete my sketch. Again, enter the extruded cut tool, and we will do a cut through all to cut out our windows. Now let's model the nose cone using the revolve tool. With the side view image visible, sketch on the right plane and use the line tool to draw the center line and back face of the nose cone. And I'll use the spline tool, setting constraints to the handles and adjusting their length to come to the correct shape that blends well with the nose of the fuselage. For the last essential function detail, let's do a simple extrusion for the tail skid. I'll leave the side view image visible, sketching on the right plane, and sketch over the drawing of the tail skid. Once you're happy with the shape of the skid, exit the sketch and navigate to the extruded boss slash base tool. In the property manager, in the drop down under direction 1, let's extrude this skid on the mid plane 0.2 inches. Now let's soften this tail skid up with a standard 0.02 inch fillet. I'm going to use this handy toolbar that pops up when I hover over the first selected edge which allows me to quickly select several of the features edges rather than clicking on them one at a time. In this case I want to apply the fillet to all of the skids edges. This model wouldn't do the spirit of St. Louis justice without adding that iconic radial engine to the nose. I've managed to find a downloadable radial engine cylinder model which I've scaled down in preparation for importing into this model. To import another part into this part file go to insert part and navigate to the part you'd like to import. Take a look at the Insert Part Property Manager, where you can choose what aspects of the model to import, including axes, planes, sketches, etc. In this case, I have an unabsorbed sketch I'd like to reference for moving this engine cylinder into place, so I make sure that option is checked, and I'll click in the workspace to drop my cylinder out in space. As you can see, the unabsorbed sketch is imported as well. To move this cylinder into place, I'll first sketch on the right plane to create a reference point where the top of the cylinder should lie. And I'll go ahead and dimension this in case I need to make some minor adjustments after moving the cylinder into place.
To move the body, click on the Move Copy Bodies tool in the Command Manager. First, I'll select the body I want to move, and under the Translate option, you can select a point you'd like to move the body from, and then select the point you'd like to move the cylinder to. Make sure the Copy option is not checked, and then click the green check mark to move the body. With our first cylinder in place, we can now do a circular pattern to simulate the radial engine. Under the Linear Pattern function in the Command Manager, you'll find the Circular Pattern tool. You can use a number of different references for the direction of the pattern, such as a reference axis, a cylindrical face, or a circular edge. In this case, we have the circular edge of our nose cone that we can utilize. We'll make sure this is set to equal spacing around 360 degrees, and the original Spirit was built with a 9-cylinder Wright J5C radial engine, so we will set our number of instances to 9. Just as with the mirror tool, you can pattern features, faces, or bodies. In this case, we are patterning a body. And there we have our simulated radial engine. I'll be adding some additional details to this model later on. But with the basic model complete, let's wrap up this series by running through how to apply some custom appearances and decals. When applying appearances, keep in mind that there is a hierarchy applied based on where they are assigned to the model. With faces falling at the top of the hierarchy, then features, then bodies, and then the entire part file. In other words, an appearance applied to a face will remain visible even if its parent feature, body, or entire part file are assigned appearances. On the other hand, applying an appearance to a single feature will override a separate appearance applied to its parent body, because the feature appearances fall higher on the hierarchy. So let's start by applying an appearance to the entire part file, and then move up the hierarchy from there. I'll add a lightly textured appearance to the entire model to simulate the aircraft's canvas covering. Under Appearances in the Display Manager, you can double-click on an appearance to adjust its color. We'll make this one light gray. Now let's simulate the tires by adding a rubber appearance to the rounded faces of the tires. and I'll apply a polished aluminum appearance to this separate spinner body. Finally, we can apply a polished steel appearance to the imported cylinder feature. Then double-click the polished steel appearance in the Display Manager, and under Selected Geometry, I can select our circular pattern feature to apply the appearance across the rest of the cylinders and I'll just adjust the color to give these cylinders a darker patina. Now, the Spirit of St. Louis's aluminum cowling finish is very unique, and I couldn't call myself an aviation enthusiast if I ignored applying a turned finish to the nose. However, this is going to require some customization using a downloaded image. One of the easiest ways to apply an appearance with a custom image is to first apply one of the default SOLIDWORKS appearances that references an image file. I know all of the wood appearances do just that, so I'll first apply one of the wood textures to one of the cowling faces. Double click this newly applied appearance in the Display Manager to edit it, and select the Advanced button to bring up additional editing options. Here you will see an option to browse for an image. So we will browse to our downloaded image, in this case this turned aluminum texture I found. And now under the Mapping tab I can select all of the faces I'd like this appearance applied to, and adjust its size and orientation until I'm happy with the look. Under the Illumination tab, I'm going to adjust the reflectivity and luminous intensity to help it look more like polished aluminum.
Now I can sleep well at night knowing I've done this model justice by adding its iconic cowling finish to the model. Finally, let's run through how to apply a custom decal like the one I've applied to the left side of the nose. We'll apply the same nose art to the right side of the cowling. Again, we will start with one of the default SolidWorks decals and customize from there. Let's drop this SOLIDWORKS logo with transparency on the right face of the cowling, which automatically brings up the decal property manager. Here we can browse for a new image file, which I downloaded and tweaked a bit. And because we don't want any background to this image, we must use an image mask file. The image mask file should be the exact same as the decal image, but with the background changed to black, and the decal detail you'd like to keep changed to white, as shown in the image I created here. Now in the mapping tab we can choose which faces this decal goes across and adjust its size and orientation. We can either do this visually or make fine adjustments to the decal's X and Y positioning and size dimensions. So there is our basic completed Spirit of St. Louis model. There are a bunch of other details you can add to this model, such as air vents, handle grips, or the wind wheel located on the top of the fuselage. Play around with these techniques you learned throughout this series and go crazy adding as much detail as you can. This is great practice for learning the many powerful tools in SOLIDWORKS. Have fun and thanks for watching.